everybody. I'm your host, Jamie Serretta. On this podcast, we celebrate everything local in Arizona. And if you are craving some gumbo, maybe some Southern comfort food with a flair, you are going to love CeCe's on Central. I have the owner, Sharon Cunningham, with me today. Sharon, great to see good you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Great to see you. Nice to be seen. And nice to meet you. And not indeed. viewed. <laughs> <laughs> well, people are going to be watching. Well, yeah. You know, people watch podcasts now. That's a good thing. Uh, it is. It, well, especially because we brought some great food. Food, yes. uh, with you today. Let's tell people what CC's on Central is. What do you do there and what does that name stand for? So we are um, family owned operated. It's myself, my son, well, my family um, mm. and everybody that comes in is family. Um, Southern style um, cafe. So CC's is Cunningham Cafe. Mm-hmm. I say you pick a seat. We're Cunningham's, we're a cafe, we're on Central and we're Christian. Oh, there you go. We all are. Take a pick a seat. Yeah. And then you offer what kind of food there? Southern food. Um, Southern food with a twist. So it's kind of that American because we do the burritos and we have our po' boys and we have wings, gumbo, jumbo, well, not really gumbo every day, yeah. um, but the jambalaya, the etouffees. So the Southern, um, just Southern good home food. Yeah, and delicious food Thank for you. sure. You brought some uh, things with us. So, you know, I always have to address the food first yes. because I get very distracted. It smells delicious. Let's start with this uh, po' boy you have right here. What is so this? So we have our hot link po' boy, which is... Um, our hot link, it's a smoked beef hot link made by Shriners, which is local, mm-hmm. um, with the fully dressed. Fully dressed is the lettuce, tomatoes, pickles, and our house dressing. Um, we have our breakfast burrito, um, which is our with our homemade chicken sausage. And then we have our Dankenstein wings. What 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 was that word? Dankenstein. That's, so my son, Devin, is the creator um, of our dank wings. Okay. Popular. And dank means like awesome, bomb, yeah. dank. Dank. Totally bit, totally yeah. dank. Is that, that the thing? <laughs> all that, all that. I mean, it's a dry rub. So uh-huh. all our wings that we do are going to be a dry rub, dry rub. Uh-huh. Um, and special wings on Wednesdays. Yep. And we kind of change up every Wednesday, different uh-huh. flavors, different. So we did do our danks, uh-huh. um, spicy dill, fully dressed. You name. I don't know. We have all kind of wings, just oh different flavors. So what was it about cooking for you? When did you start in the kitchen? And, and you had a restaurant in California before, I right? Still have a restaurant oh, in California. Do. Call me crazy. Yes. Um, but my husband runs that one. <laughs> uh-huh. um, so that's Sharon's Creole Kitchen in Marietta. Oh. Um, and, I, you know, I just, I think growing up, uh, my family, we did a, what do we have? I grew up in a, um, my family had a born care home. So we always had um, developmentally disabled. We had a workshop for de- developmentally disabled. Uh-huh. Had a born care home. So I've always cooked. Always was in the kitchen with my family, with my grandmother, and just always cooking. Lots, lots for cooking. I just yeah. enjoy cooking. And I like to eat. So you like to eat, you got to cook. Oh. <laughs> um, so just kind of started there and yeah. had a, you know, I don't really don't know how I, where it came from. Really? I just had a desire to, to cook and then start catering. Um, from catering, did the restaurant in California. Um, had just kind of went through a whole little cycle. I had breast cancer. Um, it's been five years. Congratulations. Um, so through all that. clear? All clear. All clear. Amen. Um, what was I, that like? How did that change your viewpoint? You know what? It was, um, so when I had breast cancer, I didn't have the first restaurant in California. Mm-hmm. It was after my breast cancer, my final surgery. I just decided, you know, you only live once. Let's kind of get back to doing what I enjoy doing and just kind of pa- that passion yeah. of eating and um, hospitality, just serving people. Um, and like I said, you only live once. I said, you know, let's do it. Let's get back into the. What were you doing? Were you doing something else? Were you working in another I, I field? Had a, I had a real job. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> a real job. What was that? I actually did HR and payroll oh. um, for like for, for my family company in LA, oh. and so we did that, and that, and it was kind of just the way everything just kind of played out. That business was closing, mm. um, finished with the the cancer treatment, and I was like, okay, what am I gonna do? I was like, okay, let's go back to what you loved, what I love, and we started simply Sharon's. No, Sharon's career. We so back up. 10 years ago, and that's kind of where Devin kind of started. Your like, son. Uh-huh. Uh, 10 or 11 years ago, we started with Simply Sharon's in Temecula. Oh, wow. That kind of had a short live, and then I went back to work, and then the breast cancer, and then we mm-hmm. kind of full circle back to Sharon's Grill Kitchen in Marietta, and now we're CC's. So oh, I'm kind wow. of all over the place. Just, Not really. Just, it feels like all kind of in line. It was, and it just yeah. everything just kind of happened I guess the way it was supposed to happen. And you said you were working for your family business, so your family is entrepreneurial. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we had that, and that was, I guess I was born and raised. My dad used to tease me. I don't know if this is going to be politi- 
politically correct, um, but I, he used to say I had my own personal DD because we always had boarding care homes with disabled and adults, and I just always was kind of around that. That's just what we did. Yeah. And that's helping and serving and um, it's who we are, who I am. I serve. And you wanted to be here in Phoenix, even though you have the California restaurant, because your family is here, right? The kids are here. My kids are here. I just woke up one day and they, they teased me because I said, you know, I just woke up. I said, I think I want to move to Arizona. And I was like, well, my kids are here. I was like, why not? And then like within the next week, Devin, somebody had told Devin about the space. And I, he, looked, he said, Mom, it'd be perfect. I was like, okay. And I looked at it, I was like, let's do it. Uh-huh. So again, we're stepping out on faith. And again, just things just kind of, they kind of fell and then they dropped. <laughs> and then we, so we're still trying to pick it back up and get it happening. So Yeah. And you mentioned Devin. He's the chef there. And yes. he's, become, he's become a bit of a celebrity chef. Tell me what's going on with him. Who knows? <laughs> he's, um, he's that celebrity. He's that, that guy. He's, um, so he was on Chow House. Okay. Um, which is Food Network um, in October of last year is when they aired it. And he went to Italy um, for a month. To compete. To compete with other, I think it was like 12 other chefs. Cool. Um, so he did that and he made it to the to the finale. He didn't win, but, you know, he was a winner in our book. And the prickly pear took him out. The Arizona prickly pear really? oh, took man. him out. Um, but again, that we were really, really proud that he, you know, did that. And um, he's been just kind of just going and doing his thing from there. Just kind of the opportunities for him is just, yeah. the, it's open. He, you know, he can do so much. And so we're proud of him. Those mm-hmm. connections are so important. And, and he worked for what, a decade here in Phoenix around different yeah, restaurants? Yeah, so he's worked with um, Chef Jones. Mm-hmm. Um, Stephen I, Jones. That's, I think that was really like his, when he, so his, for Devin, he came out, like I said, Devin's been in Arizona, I think, 12 years now. Mm-hmm. 10, 12, 13 years-ish, somewhere around about. Came out um, just on a whim. His sister said, Devin, come out to Arizona. Let's. Ah, Jordan, right? Jordan. Yeah, we got to shout out Jordan. Jordan. Yeah. Jordan from, <laughs> Hi, uh, Jordan. <laughs> she was, uh, was at, at, at ASU. She said, you know what? You're in California. Nothing's happening in California. Come to Arizona. Aww. And so he came, worked at House of Tricks and some other spots out here, and then he got with Chef Jones. Yeah. And just kind of, Chef just really poured into him. Uh. Um, and mentored him and just all I think all the chefs all the young folks that came under Chef Jones have a, a true passion mm. and um, just what Chef Jones did with those young guys just you got I don't know you can just see the yeah. the passion that he put, that he has yeah. and that he installed in them I the wonder why I tear up on this thing <laughs> I tear up all the time what do you think about uh, Chef Stephen Jones you know we we met him when he was at the um Oh, what was that space? It was kind of a space. The, um, it was the soda. The yeah, soda. the soda market. Yep, yep. Yes, he was there, and then he had a lot of um, food places there. Then he had the larder in the Delta, yep. and now he's moving into Binkley's, yes. hand chosen by Kevin Binkley to move into his space. And yes. that restaurant is just now opening up in October, so that's yes. so exciting yep. for him. And then beautiful to hear how he's been pouring into these chefs here in the Valley, yep. because you see how. Um, that networking, you call it networking, mentoring, the yes. connections made. The con- it's all about the connections. And I, I think me, since I've been here in Phoenix, um, it's almost two years that we've been here now. That That's it? It's We opened up January wow. of 23. Mm-hmm. So it's almost we're almost at that two-year mark. And okay. just, uh, the, again, the network, the community and the food industry here is and the opportunities um, of just, just everybody. It's just been so... Um, encouraging again you know I got you know Chef Jones and then you have um, Devin's built relationships with um, Scott from Little Miss nah. um, Renee yes. from Bacanora oh wow that, you know so just, James Beard award winner big deal yeah yeah that's it's awesome it's funny when I go to the airport and I see it like look at Renee there's this picture he's in the he's in the airport um, and then you have uh, the Pho Pho family oh. um, David I don't even know their last name but Pho 43 oh, so okay, just yeah, all yeah. these different connections and just the different cultures and everybody just really working together, encouraging one. It's mm-hmm. not a competition. I mean, we're all out here to make money and right. to you know make a make living. Make a living, yeah. Um, but it's just nice that they encur- the encouragement and the love that you see within the yeah. food industry out here. It really is. It's beautiful to see, especially because it's it's rather new. Mm-hmm. I mean, really, in the last 10 years, Phoenix has become on the map for more than golf and shopping. Yes, <laughs> yes. And our food scene has really Exploded. just become... Exploded. And that's what Devin has yeah. actually just recently has just said. He said just, uh, somebody asked him, how does he like living in Phoenix? He's like, you know, I really, I enjoy Phoenix. Yeah. You know, just opportunities that are here 
for the food industry. Mm -hmm. um, again, it's so diverse. And yeah. it's just something for everybody and just the love, yeah. you know, the encouragement and the love that you get. Well, let's tell people where to find you so they can Good show luck. you some love and encouragement. <laughs> yeah. You know, you're you're a hidden gem, but it's also hidden in plain sight, yes. as they say. Yes. Because you're right off of Central. Where are you located? We're off of, we're 2800 North Central. Um, parking is on at 2800 Edgemont because okay. um, you can't get to us. We're between the, the towers, the 2800 and 27 towers. Um, so we're right in the middle. We're facing U-Haul. Um, I, I always tell people we're, we're, we're facing U-Haul right off of Central in the food court or the, the courtyard that's yeah. right there. Um, so it's, it's like it is at Hidden Gym. Yeah, it's and people, hidden in plain sight because how many times do people drive right by? Which is why I do local love, to open the doors, make sure because – you, you drive by these places all the time, and you just don't go in. Right. And people need to see what's in yes. before they'll go spend their money. So yes. that's why I like to open the door, let them meet Sharon, <laughs> let them know Sharon's got an awesome po' boy, and that you should come see her. Come see me. Yes. Come see me. Um, what would be the closest uh, landmark besides that U-Haul that's on your side of the street? Because U-Haul, you're staring at the So I, we're by the, um, the old Honey Bears. Oh, there you go. All right. Honey Bears and, you know, not to... Um, <laughs> Cause that was, and that was going to be uh, Little Miss. Little Miss was supposed to be there. Um, so yeah. we're that's that street, that side street is Edgemont. Okay. So I always tell people you have to get out your car, or park in the garage. Yes. Because we have the park mm -hmm. parking garage. And again, people is in hidden in plain sight. And just some of the questions and when people call, where are you located? And I think we well, have to come in the parking garage. And you have to get out your car to walk to the elevator. And it's yeah. like it's like really like yeah. So but yeah. Um, but we're but there. it's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. And when I came into the local love that morning, you had a lot of people coming in for breakfast. Yes, yes. We're um, it's and during the summer it was kind of slow. Yeah. Um, I guess that's the thing right here in Phoenix. Yeah, it is. So we're we're, we're here. We hear that the season is coming up. So encourage people come visit us yes. keep our doors open <laughs> yes well we come need to have you come us. back on uh the news at three to do something with fall yes um, you know i mentioned the gumbo which is not always on your menu i Don't must have had the etouffee did i have the etouffee you have the etouffee i think you know etouffee and you did the shrimp and grits i think oh yeah um but we have it all and we're gonna change up our menu uh -huh. um we're gonna uh start doing some dinners oh. um a couple of nights during the week um we're gonna open for saturday breakfast um, and just going to try to do some creative things with the menu. We're going to have something from New Orleans. It's called Yaki Yakiman. It's a um, it's New Orleans pho. Oh, that so, sounds interesting. So that's going to that's coming. Uh -huh. Still working out some kinks on that one, and so trying to be fun. And uh, we're going to start doing a cooking class. Oh my gosh! Stop it. We're going to start doing oh, a cooking fun. class in October. So every October is my birthday. Oh, happy birthday! October, when is October what? Thirtieth. Okay. So we got breast cancer. We're in this yes. October. Mm -hmm. We're going to start opening in October for uh, breakfast. Okay, so the new hours are what? 10 to 6, 10 Monday to through six. Friday? Monday through Friday, 10 Saturday, to 6. Saturday, 10, 10 to 2-ish. Two. Two so come mm -hmm. have brunch. Ish. Ish. Have brunch. Ish. Yeah, have breakfast might, brunch. Yeah, we might do some dinner on Sunday, Saturday nights too. Still oh. playing. So have, when you're family owned, operated, you have the flexibility to be creative and do what you want to do. Yeah. Change hours when you want. Mm. And well, you you hinted, you touched on it about the Arizona summer. This is two years for your restaurant. The Arizona summer is a really big deal. How did you make it through? Because I mean, half the town leaves. The other said I made it. <laughs> <laughs> you made it, right, Sharon? <laughs> I'm here. We're, we're making it through. We're, uh -huh. Again, it's it being being able to having to figure out what works. Yeah. That flexibility. The. Um, you know, changing the hours yeah. and just adjusting to the heat and encouraging people to come, come see me. Support local. Support yes. local, please support. And not, and not just me, just, again, I know everybody, um, it's a thing out here. And they say you're supposed to prepare mm -hmm. beforehand to know. And that's why I think a lot of businesses close down in the summer. The yeah. restaurants close. Yeah, they leave. Yeah, the, a small business will leave. They'll yeah. lock and up. I, didn't, I didn't know that. They yeah. didn't tell me that. So. <laughs> It wasn't in the handbook. No, it wasn't there is no that. handbook, is there, Sharon? No, no. Oh, I wish it was. Yeah. But now I know. So yes. next year we're going to close. Uh huh. Um, Are you? Probably. Yeah, yeah. You have to. Yeah. Are you? Again, adjust and figure out what's going to work and how to make it work. Uh -huh. And that adjustment. So. Yeah, I you know I always send out paperwork for a couple uh, key guidelines that I'd like to ask about. And you mentioned about the numbers. Know your numbers in a business. Can you uh, tell me about I'm that? I'm still trying to figure out. Know your numbers. You have to. Again, it goes. With the summers being closed, um, know what it what do you, what do you need to sustain, mm -hmm. and you have to know your numbers. You got to know what your your food cost is. You got to know what your staffing is. 
um, those things are important to keep you keep you going and be ahead of the game mm-hmm. and know what that game is and know what that end goal is. Um, so you got to know your numbers. How many employees do you have over there? Uh, we are at six. Six employees. Yeah, six. Small but mighty. Small but mighty. And yeah. again, it's, you know, you have to, right now during the summertime, people need those hours. They want hours yeah. to work. But if you don't have the, the business, how do you justify? Mm-hmm. And again, that's where your numbers come in. So well, what is that building that you're in? Are there offices? Is it a is it a living um, space or a workspace? It's uh, so we have two buildings. You have the 2800, which is our mother building, uh-huh. um, and in that office you have MEPS, which is your military processing, and that's where people get sworn in. Oh. Um, we have what else is over there in that building? Insurance, attorneys. Um, I think that's it in that building, and okay. then yeah. So, but most people don't work in the office anymore. Yeah, Everybody works from weird. home. I know. So, you know, so are you in the delivery apps? I got all the delivery. You got DoorDash, Uber Eats, DoorDash, Uber Eats, Grip Up. Yeah. So we do all that. Uh, Fuja, which is a catering, oh. a large catering group. And you can do large catering too mm-hmm. because the holidays are coming up. Yep. And people might want a Creole dinner. And not just, you know, I don't like to put myself in that box. Um, I do it all. You know, we can do, what do it all. Tell you me name, what? I can, you name it, I can do it. If you need me to be... Lasagna? I can do lasagna. Oh. I probably make a, a, make a, should I say it? Yes, say <laughs> no. it. She turns to Jen. <laughs> Why are you turned to Jen? Because it's a joke, <laughs> a running joke. We're going to just call it, I make, um, I can do Italian. We do shakati. Uh-oh. What, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> Jen, should she elaborate? <laughs> no. <laughs> but no, we do, uh, again, it's being, being able to be creative. Yeah. Um, you know, my family is from Louisiana. Okay, I was going to ask, where, where in Louisiana? Um, Opelousas. Okay. And then my in-laws are from uh, Baton Rouge, okay. Lake Charles. It's on that, uh, that kind of end. Um, my in-laws are from Mississippi. Oh, wow. So, you know, we, Southern cooking is what we do. It's yeah. what, who we are. But again, with Southern cooking, it's, it, it, it's just more of a, um, it's just good food. Yeah. It's just good food. But I can do it all. Like I said, I can be, you know, I can do Italian. You know, Devin is that... Um, you know, again, from Chef Jones, it's he makes stuff sometimes I'm looking like, where'd you get that from? Why? Um, but we can do it all. Yeah. Uh, you got so remember chicken. that. So folks need to remember that you you can do catering and you can do special order. Uh, event space. Yeah, event. Our space is available to rent. Oh, wow. Um, you know, and we're, we're that full service. So you figure we have a full bar. Mm-hmm. Um, we have the, the private chef. Um, we have a nice event space yeah, available. You do. Um, that people can rent out. How many people in there? You think is far was the capacity? Probably about eighty ish. Yeah, that that's perfect for a family gathering. Yeah, family gatherings. You yeah. got bridal showers. Yeah. You got just anything. Um, we have the beautiful courtyard. Mm. That's you know we can open up and do things. And um, we have the outside patio yeah. that we can do things on. So it's it's and I think that's why we like the space because it was just so many possibilities yes. with that space. In the heart of Central Phoenix, I mean, and, really is. And parking is available. Yeah. You know, we validate. And I think, again, that was a thing. Downtown, um, I guess parking is hard. And so yeah. we have a full garage that's unlimited. Mm-hmm. Um, that's something we're going to start doing is our first Fridays. Ah, oh, come on. What are you going to do? Um, so first Fridays is, a, I guess, what is it? The first Friday of every month. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, downtown, Midtown Phoenix. Yeah. Um, they have the, the vendors and all mm-hmm. the, the stuff. So we're going to be that, uh, being that we're right there at the light rail, come party with us before you either, either you can party, stay with us and party there yeah, or kind of eat meat and then mm-hmm. go down and, and you can park there and then hit the first Friday. Life hack. You, because parking is terrible right. at first Friday. Right. Exactly. You, you can't hop on the light rail and go down. So that's our new thing. So we just started that that's one great. last first Friday. So the next one, whenever that is. We'll do it again. And we have music. Uh-huh. I'm looking to get some vendors out in the, our little courtyard area and try to make it a thing. Fun. It sounds fun. Want it to be fun. Are you enjoying Phoenix? Strangely, I am. My mother says. <laughs> Why so strangely? Because it's so hot. <laughs> uh, yeah, and that's yeah. what my mother says. She says, do you like it? I was like, yeah. I really enjoy it. For Phoenix to be such a large city, yeah. it still has a f- small feel. It's yeah. comfortable. Everybody has been so friendly, warm. Oh, good. Um, Again, I'm from California. I'm from the L.A. area. Oh. So, and I never thought I would leave California. Um, and here I am, damn near 60, in Phoenix with my kids. With your kids. With no grandkids. I'm like, can you guys get married? <laughs> Give me some grandkids. I want to be close to you for that reason. Uh, yeah. I have grandpups. 
even better. So, you know, we take them. Are they cute? They are. They're big. Oh, they're, really? um, it's a cane corso uh-huh. and a Doberman mix. Oh, wow. Big. Big dogs. Big. And they're house dogs. Oh, yeah, Fuck. why not? Slob. <laughs> but I love them. We love them. We love them. Jordan, I love them. Jordan, I love them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan's dogs then. Jordan's dogs. Because Devin's on the move a lot. Devin's on the move. He doesn't want dogs. He said, yeah. I, and which, you know, dogs are a lot of responsibility. Yeah, they are. So, you know. Devin, they're cute, though. They're cute. They're yeah. cute. They're, but they're work. So, but we take them. I like asking people about the jump, about going into business for themselves, leaving corporate America, whatever that safe job is that they've been working on, but their dream is to have their own place, like what you have now. What do you tell people? What what lessons did you learn that you wished you hadn't had to learn that way? You know, I think every day I'm still learning. I'm yeah. still, again, being that, like I said, I started, um, we had our first one in... Oh my goodness. Like I said, I think it was about 13 years ago. We had Simply Sharon's and I listened to my dad. We started out small. I had a breakfast and lunch spot in Temecula. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we, we blew up really fast. Mm-hmm. And I think within six months, uh, old Tony Romas was available. And my dad says, yeah, let's, we can do it. We can do it. And yeah. I said, okay, dad, let's go ahead and do it. And we did it. And again, knowing, not knowing my numbers, not knowing business, mm-hmm. how to, I mean, cause yeah, you can know how to cook. But just because you know how to cook, it doesn't re- translate into having a full-blown restaurant. And I had an old Tony Romas, about 4,000 square feet. Yeah, big. Um, or more. And all these staff. And you have to know your numbers and know how to maintain. And so we lasted all of two years mm-hmm. and closed down. And I said, I would never do it again. I said, I would never. I was hurt, so hurt. Because mm. I, I felt like a failure. Um, and... And just that kind of the, just that, it was just a bittersweet. And then I kind of got back in the catering again. I said, okay, maybe it wasn't so bad. Yeah. Um, and, but again, it was just some hard lessons, hurtful lessons, you know, just yeah. with people. I had management that really was against me. I felt like they were against me. Your, so, your, your team? My, my team. So I thought, you know, but again, because I didn't know his thing was, is I'm supposed to be the face and you let your manager manage. Oh. And I'm not supposed to have a say. You let oh. him run it. And I was like, no. Uh, I'm the boss. I'm the boss. <laughs> yeah. That's, you know, so that Why was. Why do you make the rules? Right. Mm-hmm. But so that was, that was a, God rest his, his soul because he oh. passed away. Oh. Um, but I couldn't stand him. Mm. <laughs> but, but again, that was some hard lessons to, for myself to right. know what, what did I want and what did I expect from my own business? This right. is who right. I am. It's my name is on this. This is my brand. And how you how do you allow somebody to come in and kind of dictate? So mm-hmm. that was again, that was some lessons to for myself to learn who mm-hmm. I am, what and even now, who I am, um, and what do I want and what do I expect? Um, you know, who I want what's my mm-hmm. legacy? Yeah. You know, I can say, Yeah, Devin is my cook and Devin is the that guy, but who is Sharon? And who does who does um what do I want people to see and know of me? Not mm-hmm. not that I'm just Devin's mom. Not that I'm yeah. just not. I'm not just a CC's on Central. You know, I'm I'm a person. I'm I'm a uh, I'm a mom. I'm a wife. I'm I'm a, a Christian, and I I love I I enjoy doing what I do. And I don't know if I answered the question or not. I just probably I feel like I just went a whole circle. <laughs> I, well, I asked about uh, hard lessons that you learned in the business that, and that you wish learning. you hadn't. Yeah, and yeah. I'm, I'm still learning those lessons. Yeah. I'm still, you know, navigating, um, again, jumping from California to here. My husband is still in California. Running, running, running your restaurant. Yeah, running the restaurant there. So just trying to even navigate. It's kind of nice, but, you know, it's... <laughs> Hi, husband. <laughs> she misses you dearly. <laughs> and he's actually, so, he's, so we're closed there Mondays and Tuesdays. Uh-huh. So when he, we're closed there, he's here. Oh. So he's in town. Um but again, just trying to navigate that. Yeah. You know, what does that look like? Um, to, have, to have two restaurants that you're trying to... In two states. In two different states. You know, completely different. To be, they're so similar, but so different. So that one there is, um, it's lunch and dinner. Uh-huh. Um, and I say everything there is fried, dye, dip to the side. Oh, <laughs> Um, Wait, say it slow for the people in back. What is it? Fry, die, dip to the side. <laughs> um, so, it's, I mean, it's like, that one is like true, true Southern. It's fry, die, dip to the side. So what do you mean? What fried would be? chicken. It's the fried chicken. It's the fried catfish, snapper, shrimp, oyster. I mean, it's that full Southern, Southern. Yeah. 
full spread every day. All, well, not every day, but, you know, every day that we're open yeah. always. Um, Wednesday through Sunday. And so you got the oxtails. You have the gravy, the mac and cheese, um, your candy yams, your black eyed peas, that mm. whole, your okra, your hush puppies as you look at me with those eyes. I mean, keep eyes. talking to me. <laughs> keep, keep talking. Don't stop. <laughs> And so, I love hush puppies. That's so good. And so, we, and so yeah, that's our yeah, everyday menu yeah, there. Well. So I'm going to try to implement some of those things mm-hmm. here, but nice. just not. It's just too much. Again, with soul food, it's an expensive food to make. Is it? Yeah. It's you know, again, fish is expensive. Mm-hmm. Your oxtails are high as all get out, mm-hmm. but but that's good comfort food. Yeah. And I think that's what we're missing here in Phoenix. It's yeah. good true comfort. That true comfort Southern food. Right. But it's work. How has the inflation impacted? I mean, we've seen, I've seen different chefs, chef and owners post the, you know, back in this year, the prices were here, back now in this year, it's double for some ingredients, et cetera. Yeah, same. It's, it's, I mean, that's what it is. Again, know your numbers. You mm-hmm. have to, and that's why you have to be able to adjust your menu so it's cost effective. And you might have to take some things off, you add some things, um, whatever's going to work. To, you know, to keep your doors open and keep you, keep you going. Yeah. But it's where the, Food costs here in Arizona is actually cheaper than California. Oh, so you're buying stuff here and sending it over? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, dummy, she says. <laughs> you got to do what you got to do. But I think yeah. gas prices here are cheaper, so I think it... Uh, affects everything. Yeah, it just makes... I mean, it's still stuff is still hot. Yeah, and then um, you're traveling. I mean, you and your husband have to travel back no, and forth a bit? No, he travels. I oh, don't he travel. does. Oh. I travel every once in a while. Does he drive or fly? He drives. Oh. He, likes, he said that's his solace. That's his yeah. time to kind of get in and do that four and a half hour drive mm. and um, his time with the Lord. Yeah. So it's like, okay, you enjoy. Go ahead and you yes, drive. Yes, drive safe. I, yeah, drive, drive safe. safe. When I go, I'm flying. Me and American have a thing. Yeah. <laughs> we need to make that uh, happen. Um, does he drive through Yuma? No. No? Does he? No, no, no. He I does the he 10 straight through. Oh, okay. Um, so I'm thinking San Diego. Yeah, um, yeah no, he does the, because we're, that's further down. So he does the yeah. 10 to the 215. Okay. Not bad. No, it's four, four hours, four and a half ish. I mean, that's not bad. Yeah, no, no. But who wants to look? when you can do a forty-five minute flight? I know. I'm flying. Yeah, I'm flying. Do that flight. Yeah, so. the up down. They throw some peanuts at you. <laughs> Get you're your done. drink. Bye. Yeah, you're done. <laughs> yeah. So, but it's nice. Uh, it's fun. How you mentioned um, that manager who wanted to, I guess, manage up and manage you. How did you learn how to stand up for yourself in your business and in your space? <laughs> I left. <laughs> I told him I because it was so I was funded. But my parents were helping me. Yeah. Um, and I said, you know, you guys want to listen to him. I left. Oh. I, and I and I think that was I shouldn't have left. I think I should have stayed to stand my ground um, and stand up to him and say, you know, no, this is my vision. This is these are my recipes. Mm-hmm. And this is going to be my way. So if you don't like it, you can leave. It's what I should have did. Mm-hmm. Um, but I took the easy way out. Well, however you want to look at it, I took the way out and I just left and said, you know what? I'm not going to do this again. I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not going to do it. You go ahead and you think you have it. Go do it. And he didn't have it. And it. Yeah. They, they closed, and then a few years later, he died. Oh. Rest his soul, because you're not supposed to talk ill about no, the dead. No, we, we never would. <laughs> so, <laughs> why why do you think it's so hard to stand up for yourself in your business, even in your own business? I think that's who I am. Um, I think for me, I um, I I don't know. I I don't know. I, it was just hard. I, well, then it was. It was just, I don't know. I, I can't even answer yeah. that. I don't even, even know well, how to I answer. ask because I find like I feel when I stand up for myself, I feel bad. I feel guilty for saying something. I, th- I, I, and I think I because like, I'm why? a people pleaser. Yeah, is that I th- it? I, w- I think because I'm a people pleaser um, and I find it difficult. It's Again, it's not that it's difficult to stand up to somebody. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't want to be attacked. I don't want the competition. Yeah, I don't do. I don't do. Oh my goodness, mm-hmm. man! That that's it. I don't mm-hmm. do confrontation well. It's easy for me, you know. I'll just back down and mm-hmm. just tuck and turn and go. I'm getting better. Yeah. Um, where I'm trying, I'm learning to, that I have to stand up for myself. Yeah. Um, stand up for what I believe and hold my own. Mm-hmm. I get yeah, but it's still hard. It is hard, isn't it? <laughs> still hard. And again, I because I don't like confrontation. Yeah. I don't like to be. Um, yeah, I don't like confrontation. I don't want to argue with somebody. Yeah, I don't I want it. the. 
sometimes I tell myself, like, use your words, Jamie. Like, use your words. You, people they, want to hear you. People want to hear you. And they want to be told, especially in a workplace, what you want and what to do. But it, sometimes it can be so challenging to it just is. spit it out. Yeah. And, it, and common sense is not common. And I think, <laughs> um, and I, for me, again, with the manager, just with people in general, mm-hmm. with the business, especially with the restaurant business, if you've been a server, if you're a cook, you know what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to know mm-hmm. what you're supposed to do. Common sense is not common. Everybody doesn't know. They need to be told. They need that instructions and directions. And I'm, I'm getting better at my kids always. Um, they get on me. You know, even now, Mom, you need to have it written down. You need, you need it written down. Make the it directive. plain um, what you want, what you expect. Because mm-hmm. how do people know? They, they're not mind readers. Mm-hmm. So you have to write it down, make it plain. Um, have your plan, your purpose, your vision, write it down so they know, and then you hold people accountable for that. Um, and I think that's why I, I've struggled is holding people accountable. Because mm. I want you to be able to think, do, you know what you're supposed to do? You're an adult. Yeah. Do what you're supposed to do. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not here to babysit. Do your job. Yeah. But people need, need to be babysat. <laughs> and, and you mentioned how much you love writing down your goals and writing down what it is you wish to see happen. I just got there because I didn't, wasn't always there. So now I'm getting better, trying to get better to write it and make it plain and follow that. Yeah. But who wants to write it down and actually go back and look like, damn, I'm supposed to do that too? Okay. <laughs> you need to get some really good pens and stationery. I have make journals. I have all yeah. the calendars. I have the stuff. Devin told, has shown me, mom, use your phone. Mm, Put- yes. <sighs> alarms. My, I have alarms all day long. I'm trying. <laughs> It is annoying. Trying. (laughs) But it don't miss much. No. Yeah. I'm trying to get there. I'm getting better, I think. Yeah. Um, But it doesn't, um, you can't change overnight. No. I tell my family, give me some grace. I give you grace. Give me a little bit. Give me some, I'm 50, how old am I? I'm old. It doesn't matter. (laughs) You're ageless. (laughs) So you can't, what do they say, you can't teach your old dog new tricks. I I think you can always keep learning. Um, Every day. Yeah. Every day is a new day, new opportunities, um, new challenges, and you have to adapt and adjust Mm -hmm. daily. Right. Every day. All and, day. And we're getting into fall. So we're getting into the busy season. We're getting into, like you said, first Fridays will be huge downtown. Yes. Uh, you already told us the great life hack to come park our car, validate there, uh, get a great meal, have a cocktail, yes. hop on the light rail. I mean, this sounds like such a fun night and know that our car is safe and sound in the parking garage. Yes. A no brainer, right? Mm-hmm. Just got to get people in the garage. Tell me about what Saturdays are going to be like, since that's special and new that you're going to be opening on Saturdays for brunch, lunch. See, that's in that plan. That's in that writing down that vision. Yeah. Um, Let's speak it out. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a pencil. I'll take notes. Um, we're still playing with it. Um, mm-hmm. People always, they were complaining about my hours. Um, they said because they can't get to me. Um, at the time they were open Monday through Friday. So, oh. okay, let's, so we'll do the Saturdays. Ten, I say 10 to, ten, ten to 2-ish. Um, and we're just going to kind of keep the same menu. Mm-hmm. Um, Which would be? Our regular everyday menu. I might add some couple of th- different things on, um, you know, more the maybe the biscuits and gravy. Mm-hmm. Some of those southern things that mm-hmm. I can kind of do that I don't do during the week that we can kind of make happen on the weekends. Yeah. Um, the salmon croquettes. Um, oh. And we might even like we might extend those hours to do some of that dinner, mm. um, that soul food, that fried chicken, and the, um, the mac and cheese. Because we do our Sunday, we have our soul food Sunday dinner. Okay, so you are still doing that? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so again, that's yeah. so. If I do the Saturday, I don't want to be. I don't want to yeah, work. You need a moment for I you. Need, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I feel, this is a, you know, yeah, so I might do family the... Family owned and operated, hello. <laughs> you need a day off. I need a day, I need a breather. Um, but instead of doing the Sunday, I yeah. think I'm going to roll that into the Saturday. So yeah. again, it's still trying to play with that and tweak so it a little bit. So stay tuned. Where, where do you make your announcements on social media? Or where yes, you, social media. Okay. Social media, we have our social media. Um, we have our website, mm-hmm. ccsoncentral.com. Um, what are we? Instagram is eat at cc's. Mm -hmm. And then Facebook is CC's on Central. Um, So social media, Mm -hmm. Instagram, uh, website, come in, visit us, do it all. Yeah, come say hi. Come say hi. I'm I'm there every day. I think I live there. Mm -hmm. Um, But But I love them. Yeah. I I enjoy, for the most part, when people come in and they, you know, I can go and have that 
build those relationships. Yes. Um, to talk to people, yeah. to know that I'm a real person. And mm -hmm. they say, what does CC stand for? And are you a C are you CC? I'm one of the CCs. <laughs> so, but it's nice for people to come in yeah. and talk. And um, again, it's building those relationships. Connections. Um, connect, it's connecting, yeah. connecting, connecting. Mm -hmm. It's so important. Yeah. And I think people need to do that more. It's to that, the hustle and bustle of this world that we live in, where we need to connect and slow down yeah. and enjoy and have a good meal and, a little drink, a mocktail or two. <laughs> <laughs> I love mocktails. Me too. I really do. What What do you make? What mocktail do you make that you love? Um, what do we make that I enjoy? We're kind of creating our, our new little menu, but I'm a pina colada kind of gal. Ooh. And I can have it with the rum or without the uh -huh. rum. Um, it's all good. Yeah. So I had a phony Negroni the other day. I don't even drink Negronis. What is it? Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> No, it is. It's some kind of cocktail. Okay. And um, it's phony. It, yeah, the one I had was a fake <laughs> one. <laughs> it was a little spicy. It was interesting. But I'll, I'll try if there's a zero proof drink on the on okay. the menu. I usually try them just because I like to drive and I like to just get in my car and go and know that yeah. I'm safe and sound. There you go. But um, I just like the name phony Negroni. How could I not? I had to. <laughs> yeah. What is it? You know, <laughs> it a, we have a, a drink. Um, it's it's an alcohol. It's very strong. It's our version of a Long Island. Oh, and it's oh called a bad decision. <laughs> and I'm so surprised how many people actually come in and get it. It's really? like, okay, and I, but I have to, I can't do them because it's like I said, I'm not a. Yeah. I don't drink like yeah. that. Yeah, I can't drink like. Mm -hmm. so I'm not a drinker. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Anyway. So the Long Island iced tea. Bad decision. <laughs> I like how you named it that right there. So it's like. You really want to order that? It is a bad decision. And they drink them, and they 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 get keep it. them coming. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, no, you, you only can do you can only do two. Oh, okay. That's, That's how good. strong they are. Oh wow. So yeah. Anyway. Oh my gosh. So a lot of people um, who come and go from Arizona go to California. So tell us where the, your restaurant is in California, and remind us the name, please. Sharon's Creole Kitchen. Mm -hmm. We're in Marietta, not Georgia Marietta. It's Marietta, California. M U R R. Um, we're outside of Riverside County. Yeah. Um, so we're in, outside of Riverside County, but before you get to San Diego. So we're um, Wednesday through Sunday, oh. 11 to 7. Okay. And then you are off of Central and? We say Central and Thomas, uh -huh. um, but it's actually Central and Edgemont. Edgemont. It's that side street. And it's Edgemont Buildings. Yes. The 2800 to Tower. Okay. And we're next to the tower, between mm. the tower. And then you just go into the underground parking lot. Um, underground parking, um, park on level A or B, mm -hmm. and take the elevator up, and we're to the right of the elevator. And we want people to think of you for their catering events. Catering events, uh, event space, catering, um, lunches. Yeah. We can cater lunches. Oh, cool. We can, uh, like I say, we're, we're that one-stop shop. And I think, again, I think people put us in that box and think, okay, we're their only southern food. They only do breakfast, you know, but mm -hmm. we can do so much more. Um, you know, like I say, I have my my own little private chef, my uh, my little food network star. Ah, yes, you um, do. That can is <laughs> you so creative. Him yourself. <laughs> yes, he's so creative ah. in the things that he can do. Um, we do steaks. We can do the prime rib. Oh, yeah. You know the the fish and the just all. He even make, can make pasta now. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. Now, I can't. Yeah. But that's what he can do. Oh, cool. Um, but again, we can do it all. We you know we can do the box lunches, the box breakfast. Um, we just want people to know that that's you know we're there where we want those large orders. Mm -hmm. um, yes, keep a local family-owned business. Yes, in business, keep us for in sure. business. Yes, and come visit us and uh, enjoy. Yeah. you know we're uh, that we're, we want to be that vibe spot um, where people can come and feel comfortable and and feel at at home. Yeah, um, I'm not that grandma in the kitchen, but I'm the mom in the kitchen and around and. Um, you feel like family when you're at your place. When we were there for our morning show, it was just, you, you saw folks who were coming in who obviously come in a lot. You saw folks who were coming in for the first time, very curious. And yeah. everyone seemed, um, you've treated them all like family for sure. And, and that's, and again, that's who we are. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, and Devin really, and it's amazing to me that how much he embraced what our family did as far as, far as our family meals. Um, you know, the get when we got we get together for breakfast at my in laws' house, or um, you know, he just really and it's just again t to know that that's what I instilled in my kids is you know family and the importance of family because I think it's a lost thing now that 
people don't have dinner at home anymore. They don't really sit at a table and eat and enjoy and um, the family. It's yeah. and so that's it's nice to and important I think that people feel the family. You know, just the, yeah. the love of, of family and, and the connections of family. Gathering around the table, the riffing, <laughs> the, the um, jokes that may fly across the table. And, and just to hear about the, your day. Yeah. And just know what you got going on for the day. And, yeah. you know, people come in and sit down. And, again, it's nice for me to be able to go and network and talk with the, the different people mm-hmm. that come in. Um, just how are you doing? You know, yeah. what, what you have going on in your life? What, you know, let's talk about how's work? Mm-hmm. You know, what you got going on? So yeah. it's just nice to connect with people to hear, get the stories Um and, and give back our story, you mm-hmm. know, because we have we all we all have something. You know, people think that you have this fairy tale, you know, you have this business and you're doing so. No, it's it's work. It's uh, it's real life. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm a real person that you know. Again, going going through the breast cancer and just that whole process of what that was like, and being able to share that, and just you know, even like, to get people come in and hear their stories, and you know, the, even those who have went through cancer, the mm-hmm. treatment. And to kind of be able to relate and share a story with somebody. And, yeah. and not just cancer, but just anything, just life lessons right. that we learn and you go through. It's nice to be able to share, to know that people are real. Yeah. And you got something. We're not perfect. Mm-mm. So Just trying to make it. Just trying to make it day to day. When you're not working, what are you, what are you loving in Arizona right, right now? What are you eating? What are you drinking? What are you doing? What are you reading? What are you just yeah, enjoying? It's funny. To people, and I think I'm because I'm a foodie, I enjoy it. And being that I have a restaurant, you would think that I eat at the restaurant every day. No. I, I cook it. I smell it. I, I'll taste. But, yeah, you can only taste so much. Mm-hmm. So I eat out a lot. And we don't eat. Um, you go to those small mom-and-pop spots. Of course. You better. You know, yeah. you're going to 443. You're going to Bacanora's. You're going to Little Miss. Um, where else do I eat? I do my peonies, the pizza. I do my federal pizza. Mm. I'm a pizza I love pasta and pizza. Oh wow! Where do you, where do you go for pasta in town? Actually, I just went last night to um, Bob. What is it? B a b b o's Bobo. Bob Bobo. I think that's what. It I is. think they're family owned. I don't know, but that's the. Dallas. I think I got something out of the big cheese wheel where they, you know, mix the pasta up in the big cheese wheel. Do they do that? Yeah, I don't know. I, but that, <laughs> so I did Bob. I think it's Bobos. Uh-huh. Um, that's one of my spots. Kind of my go tos that I. It's close to the house. Yeah. And a good Starbucks. Mm. Yes, I mean, you know, they know what they're doing. Yeah. And then my <laughs> kids laugh. My girls laugh at me because yeah. I'll go to Chick-fil-A. Oh. And I get, nug- I get nuggets for me and I get nuggets for the dogs. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, so I walk in the house uh, and the dog's like, Grandma, what you got? Uh, what you got for me? Give me some nuggets. Oh, my so, gosh. Yeah. Sharon Cunningham, it is so nice to see you. CeCe's on Central. CeCe's thank on. you, Sharon, and the family-owned business. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. It's been fun. Not so bad. Yeah, see? It was easy, right? Yes. Thanks for listening to Jamie's Local Love, the podcast. I'm your host, Jamie Serretta. Our technician is Tom Heidinger. Our editors are Lorraine Shearing and Gina Coy. Do you know a business worthy of some local love? Email me at jserretta at azfamily.com. Follow us at facebook.com slash serretta and Instagram at Serretta News. Make sure to subscribe and give us a five-star review, please. And tell your friends about the podcast and the businesses we feature to show your local love. You can find us on Apple, YouTube, Spotify, Amazon Music, and anywhere you get your podcasts. Jamie's Local Love, an Arizona's Family Originals podcast.